Um, <laughs> all right, so this is a table saw. Uh, this is, um, in my opinion, like the core of like a woodworking shop. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes straight cuts of varying uh, heights and theoretically widths. Um, it uses a 10 inch blade. Um, there's a big motor underneath this table. Uh, I was spinning a, uh, there are two uh, hand cranks on this thing. One in the front um, and one on the side. Um, the front one, um, you might want to yeah. show these. Um, uh, the one on the front, this guy right down here, um, is what controls blade height. Um, and yeah, turn clockwise, bring it up. Clockwise, bring it down. Um, you generally always want to have uh, the saw blade down when you're done using the tool. Um, having it up uh, tends to have, ends up with broken saw blades and being a little bit more dangerous, just in general. Um, and uh, you can go up to about, I don't know, three and three quarters inches of the, three and three quarter inches of the blade out of the the table. Um, you can do like maybe even four inches of cut. You can do big stuff like that. Um, that'll tack this out a little bit. The other um, wheel on the side angles the blade um, up to 45 degrees. Um, this is a left tilt table saw, which means that the blade is going to tilt away from the fence. Um, I'm not going to do it because then I have to square it again, um, which is it's kind of a common theme among all the tools. <laughs> Um, once you take it out of square, you got to square it again. So in this one of class in the future will be square. Yeah, that's pretty simple. You just got to have a thing that is square. Um, so the blade, that's major thing one uh, of the table saw. The other one is the table, which is this big flat shiny thing. Um, and then there's the fence, um, which is what allows you to control the cuts you make on the table saw. Um, this being kind of more of a free form kind of tool, you're not using guides on it. This is not a freeform tool. You don't want to just kind of like go with the table saw with the with a pipe um, or a piece of wood. Um, you're using it uh, to make precise cuts um, using the fence. Um, the fence slides back and forth. Uh, it can go to the other side of the, the saw blade if you'd like to, um, for some reason. Uh, but no, I don't have to. Uh, it slides when this knob is in the up position to lock the fence, press it down, the fence doesn't move anymore. Uh, there is a uh, measure on the fence right here and a little um, indicator. That's the distance between the fence and the blade. That's the width of the cut. So right now I'd be making a five and three, what are those, 30 seconds? Five and three, 30 seconds cut. Um, if you want to adjust, you do have to unlock it and slide it again, lock it back down. Um, but that's kind of the, those are the big major parts of the saw. Um, there's a big off thing here. The off button is much larger. You can hit your knee if your hand or face is stuck in the saw blade. Um, the on button is just above it, it's green. Um, Sounds like this when you turn it on. Um, takes a little while for the blade to slow down, just like any of these machines. There's momentum. Um, it will still hurt you if it's still moving. Uh, so, like the what this saw is really good at uh, is this kind of cut. We've got a board that is significantly, or a piece of wood material, whatever, that is significantly longer than it is wide. Mm. Uh, that's what this is really good at. Uh, if you want to do a cut like this, you're going to want to make sure that the blade is higher up than your material. Uh, generally, you want to have at least like a full a tooth. This is the part that's cutting that there to there. Um, the black part isn't cutting anything, it's just these shiny little carbide tips that are cutting. So you want to make sure you generally have at least a tooth above your works, the top of your work surface. Um, 
you're doing a cut like this, you're gonna like the the general thing you're doing is is keeping the your work piece against the fence, holding it against the fence, and then kind of just pushing straight through. Um, I'm a righty. I tend to have my my right hand being what's pushing, and my left hand kind of guiding and holding it into the fence. Uh, this is probably gonna. This is the most dangerous and scariest tool in here now. Um, it's not inherently dangerous. It's just um, it's a lot of blades sticking out of out of the table. Um, it's a very smooth, very flat cut. Um, the wood or whatever material you're doing, this does not cut metal. I'm just gonna say this does not cut metal. Um, like a plastic, like this. Uh, like it. This uh, yeah, it, it it'll do great on plastics. It um, um, it'll do a lot of composite materials too, just fine. Um, it's mostly just like the. This will cut metal with a different blade. This will cut most of the things you want to cut with it but the blade profile is going to change. Number of teeth, shape of the teeth um, varies. Like this will go through acrylic just fine, like acrylic sheet, but um, it has a tendency to like really tear out um, along the cut. Um, if you get a different blade type, you get much better results than acrylic. So that's kind of, and these blades are generally much more expensive than those blades, kind of twice as expensive. Um, so that was a really, like that's the kind of cut that this thing will do all day. And when I, I was holding it, um, pushing with my right hand, um, with my kind of thumb around the end of the, the work piece. And then as it was moving through, I was just kind of lightly holding this against the fence. Um, you do encounter some resistive force as you're pushing it into the blade because it's actually working and cutting wood away. Um, and then as I got towards the towards where the blade is, I moved this hand away because there's obviously not a whole lot of material here and I would have just cut the thumb off. Um, and I was just using using my one hand to push through with my fingers away from the blade. Um, and that's, so that's kind of how you're doing the cut, um, a basic cut on this. Just like the disc sander and the band saw, um, this saw works really nicely with a miter gauge, which is what these, there are two of them, these ways in the table. Uh, and you're doing it um, just the same way you do it on the band saw. spinning blade. Um, the safest thing to do is to wait for the turn the saw off, wait for the blade to stop, and then remove the piece. Um, when I did it, when I made the first cut before, I used the actual work piece and knocked the tail of it over. Um, which is okay. Well, it's so, okay but so if we want to cut like this, you could actually set the distance with this, with this stop and then... Um, or is that not a good idea? That's not a good idea. Um, so, so the thing that's a really bad idea on this saw is, uh, it's like, cool, I want to cut this thing to nine and a quarter inches long. I'll just set the stop and push it through like this. The problem with that is it's really easy to uh, start torquing this a little bit um, because there's no resistance here and there's a lot of resistance at the blade. And so there's a tendency to like push this part forward more. Um, and then as soon as you start doing that, um, as we all know, uh, the hypotenuse of a triangle is longer um, than its leg. Um, and so then all of a sudden you're starting to have a wider thing in between the blade and the fence than what what's the space actually pertains and allows. And the blade starts flexing out. And you get this great thing called kickback, where the whole workpiece uh, binds in the saw and just shoots into your hip or midsection or anywhere else in the shop and really hurts you. 
um, and obviously destroys the workpiece. Um, so that's not what you want to do. If you wanted to have, uh, like, get a specific, I'll try to move this, um, like distance, like if I if I wanted to make sure that this was nine and a quarter inches, you can use this and say, all right, nine and a quarter inches, cool. I'm going to hold this workpiece up against there, slides out of the way, and now do my cut to make sure that there is not doesn't have anything to bind Don't against. Use the um, and so that's that's probably the what most uh, table saw injuries are a result of people doing cuts like this. You're like, eh, it's fine, I can do it. It's fine, I'm not gonna torque it. I'm not gonna torque it. Oh god, and it hits me in the hip. It really hurts. I've seen it. I've seen kickback happen. It's it's not fun. Um, in general, is that how kickback happens when you have sideways stress on the blade? Um, it's I mean, kickback is is really kind of you get into a cut and you're halfway into a cut and there's uh, it happens a lot on kind of sheet material um, and uh, the the piece torques a little bit mm -hmm. and then it binds into the blade and essentially becomes one with the blade and gains a lot of momentum really quickly and then shoots out. Um, that's generally when you're going to get kickback. Um, that's what you want to watch out for. Um, Uh, you can cylinder materials are great on this. Miter miter gauge works really nicely for them. You can um, so like the freehanding thing uh, works, but you shouldn't do it. Um, you really should be using the miter gauge. Um, you can cut this at whatever angle you want using the miter gauge um, by just adjusting it. Um, what's the biggest size piece you could? Put on here? Um, the biggest size piece is kind of limited by the space we have uh, and kind of the table dimensions. Like right now, probably the best we can do is, and you can, you can actually take the fence off, um, but then you'd be forced to be using a miter gauge. Um, and there shouldn't be a whole lot of reason for people to take the fence off. Um, but we could probably get about, I don't know, what is that, two feet, 20 inches um, to the right of the blade. Uh, I've got another table extension over there that I could put on here and get even more space to the right of the blade. Um, other thing is um, you, need, you need to like hold your workpiece down onto the surface and there's only, this has, you know, 12, 13, 14 inches of table in front of the blade. And so if you're trying to cut something that's four feet long, it, you're, you're way the hell out of here and trying to push through. Um, can be done. Um, that would be more of an advanced technique. Um, this is not, like, this is probably not the tool, you'd, at least not, it's not set up to be the tool mm -hmm. that you'd want to cut like big four by inches of plywood with. Um, we could set it up that way. We'd put, a big table here, we put a big outfeed table over there. Also, if you've got like a big piece of material and you're like, oh, cool, my cut's done, and then there's three and a half feet of material hanging out over open space right there, um, which is wanting to make the piece rotate up, which is can be interesting to control. Um, so, yeah, um, and also the bigger the piece of material is that you're cutting, the more likely you are to be like leaning way over or um, just kind of generally out of your out of the most control you could have. Um, the general leaning over this blade is a bad idea, um, especially because although concrete is relatively grippy, you put like a nice layer of sawdust on the on the yellows and, and you're out like if you slip and that's not a soft landing. Um, so generally you are trying to be up against the fence needs to be stable. 
at least. Um, it doesn't need to be perfectly square and flat. Uh, like this isn't perfectly square and flat. It's close. It, it was glued at some point. But for the most part, it's it's not rocking. It's not moving. Um, so I can hold it up effectively up against the fence. If this were, I mean, this is kind of an extreme, too extreme to give an example. Um, where's that other piece? Of, yeah, that's what I want. Um, like this, this would not be a good way to try to cut this piece. Just like this is not good um, because it can rotate and move. Um, if I was holding it like this, where I actually have two contact points, this is better, um, but still not a great kind of thing. Um, so, nice flat surface up against the um, fence. And the boat away from the blade. Right there, that's where the cut's finished. But you still have to make sure you pay attention and push the material past the blade. Um, you can't stop paying attention once the, once the cut is finished. Um, and so, yeah, so you're going to get there. The pieces are going to separate. This side can just move out to the side. And then push that way through. This basically eats the width of these carbide tips yep. out of uh, the material. Table saw blades are standardized to an eighth of an inch. Mm -hmm. so it's called the kerf, um, is the dimension of the width of the cut that it's making. The kerf on pretty much any table saw blade that's going to be on this machine is an eighth of an inch. Um, pretty dependable, actually. Uh, they're quite, uh, the tall inches are pretty good. Um, this makes very nice cuts, um, like finished quality cuts. Um, if you put like a mm -hmm. brand new super sharp blade on there, you don't have to sand anything on these cuts. Mm -hmm. um, is this reasonable to use to make like grooves? Like if, let's say you wanted to make, you were going to put some piece of plexiglass mm -hmm. into a groove in mm -hmm. here, would yeah, that be totally, a reasonable totally. thing to do with um, this? So the one consideration there is, um, throw that up there. Um, uh, so you're talking about, as in, like a, in a profile view, you want to make that. Yes. Right. Um, so this is a obviously a square cut bottom. Um, which would require a tooth profile where the carbide tip of the blade is shaped like that. Um, most modern table saw blades, um, the two, it's, it's our alternating tooth profiles like that. And then the next one is like behind it is like that. And so the, so like the bottom of any of, of most of the cuts you're going to get are actually going to look like this. Hmm. Kind of zoomed way in. And if you, if you look actually at the blade, um, You'll, you can you can see the alternating pitch. Um, it uh, that's um, wood has wood has grain, um, more like the linear grain structure. Um, if you're cutting with the grain, it's called a rip cut. If you're cutting across the grain, it's called a cross cut. Um, rip ripping blades specifically are square tooth profiles. This works just fine. This is better for cutting through cross cuts. Um, and mm -hmm. so most blades, this is like a combination blade. It's good for doing most things pretty well. And this is a much more versatile tooth pattern. It cuts more cleanly in more circumstances. And so you're going to get that kind of thing. That said, this is, depending on the depth of the cut and what you want to do with it, that's not a big deal generally. Right, if the application can handle it. Right, if, then it's fine. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, these the table saw is great for that. Um, and the way you're going to do that is you're just going to dial your blade height whatever depth you want. Um, there is no gauge on here for how much table saw blade is out of the table. If this was a 10 times the price table saw, that would be the case, but um, it's not. Uh, it's just going to like get it to whatever you want. You can use like a, a combination square to figure out what that height is, whatever, however you want to measure that, that's fine. Um, and then it's pretty simple. You're just um, putting the piece up against the fence and pushing it through. Um, it's not going to cut through, which <coughs> is a little bit uh, confusing for some people, and they forget where their thumbs are. Um, so you do need to be aware of that the blade is still sticking out of the table. <laughs> But it's great for that. 
um and if you wanted to maybe make so this is an eighth of an inch wide cut. if you wanted to make one that's um i don't know a quarter of an inch or three eight of an inch you just shift the fence over an eighth of an inch Sight down that you can actually see that that little angling. It's it's pretty slight. Um, different blades. I don't even know if you can focus on that, but um, it's, it's pretty slight. But um, different blades at different angle. Different, probably different materials. That material probably right. This is chipping out, out a little bit more. Um, but a wood, a hardwood or something. Is, Go ahead. Uh, is there a rule of thumb about um, the distance to the fence and the width of the base of, of the workpiece? Um, because there was like that. You can cut yeah. squares. Mm -hmm. You squares are fine. Yeah. Um, if it's uh, if it's trending towards, or it, it, as soon as it goes, um, like the ratio is less than equal between um, width and length, um, then you should be using a miter gauge. Mm -hmm. um, and just because that, that kind of that sacrificial miter gauge thing I was talking about earlier. Um, where if you, for whatever whatever you're doing is you know, really delicate or something like that, you, you can screw this piece of wood to the miter gauge or to the actual miter gauge and then put your work piece on it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fine. And then you can run, you can actually run your miter gauge support fence right through the blade. Um, and it's not a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. That's actually one of the nice, mm -hmm. nice things about it. It's, it's a good question. It's designed that way. Um, but yeah, uh, you can cut squares. Mm -hmm. um, Another good question is, how close can the fence get to the table saw blade? <laughs> so I want to make the thing. I want. I want to do. I want to cut quarter inch strips of stuff. That can be done. You can do that. Um, obviously, it's going to be really hard to hold that yes. piece down with your finger when when it's this close. Also, this thing I'm doing right now, don't do that. Um, if the table saw is plugged in, don't touch the blade. That's just a good rule. Um, Cut from the other side if you're going to cut those thin strips. No. Um, no. The Push it up this side of the blade. Um, so something that I haven't made yet, but I will be making, I something called a push stick. Ah. Um, which is going to look something like, like that. Let's see, all notch at the end. You hold it made out of wood. It's sacrificial, just like everything else, uh, just like the, the fence here. And what you're going to do is you're going to, oh, I've got like a little tiny cut that I want to do. And, and really, this is as soon as you're like, wow, my fingers are getting kind of close to that blade. You like, you probably start wanted to start using a push stick five minutes ago in that case. Um, like if, if your cut is just because the fence is high and it's kind of awkward and you're, and you're trying to get your hand in there, um, even like four inches, five inches is nice. If you get your whole hand in there, um, that's you don't really need necessarily need to use a push stick. As soon as you, like this is starting to cross the, the throat plate, that's starting to get a little bit tight, and you might want to use a push stick. Um, and your push stick is going to do the same thing your hand does. It's going to hold the piece down a little bit and push, and then you're just going to use your other hand to kind of hold the workpiece down over here, well away from the blade. And you can like push through. Um, I'll make I'll make a few of them. Um, there are some, and, and at any point, if 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 there's like a weird cut you want to make, I've made a lot of weird cuts on table saws. Uh, if there's a weird cut you want to make that you're not sure how to do, or if it feels unsafe, if it feels unsafe, call me or something, or ask the internet. Um, the internet is this is not a, none of these are new tools. These have all been around for at least a hundred years. Maybe not possibly like spin like. Um the internet is just full of useful information on how to do things, and usually safely. Um, or just call me, and I can probably help you out. Um, so you can do really tight cuts. Um, please don't cut the fence. Um, 
when I was uh, doing these, doing this slot, um, and I was adjusting by an eighth of an inch every time, I didn't turn this off between between making a cut, putting the work piece off to the side, adjusting the fence over a little bit, locking it back down, and making another cut. I didn't turn the blade off, but uh, this isn't this isn't like a it's, it's kind of smooth to move the fence, but it, it's heavy and there's friction. Um, and you can theoretically like try to push and push it right into the blade while the blade's on. Don't do that. Um, this is slippery plastic, so it's not the end of the world, but, but I'm going to make you pay for a replacement face if you do that. Um, and it's probably going to be kind of scary. Um, so if you're not comfortable moving, the, if, you're not like, if you don't feel like you're in control of moving the fence, um, turn, it off. turn it off. Let the blade stop moving. Um, that's kind of the thing. Is it's um, you just really make sure um, you know what the blade is doing as you're as you're doing another action. Um, make sure that saw is off um, when you walk away. Do not walk away from a table saw. Do not walk away from any saw for that matter. Well, the blade is on, or when when the motor is on and running. Um, because other people aren't paying attention to what you're doing necessarily. Um, I think that's about it. Um, mm -hmm. We can switch blades. Um, there are, there's a thing called a dado blade, um, which is for making, this is called a dado technically. Um, and uh, there's like, I've got a dado blade set that you can make single pass cuts anywhere from more than an eighth of an inch to, I don't know, like almost, almost two inches, I think, wide. Wow. Um, you usually do it by stack, essentially stacking lots of blades together, um, and uh, and to do that you obviously need to change the blade. Um, I don't think anyone needs to change the blade on this right now. Besides me, I'm more than happy to show someone specifically that how to change the blade if they have a reason to. Um, it's not complicated, but um, and if, if if for any reason on frankly on any of these tools, if you need to, I don't know why you need to, but if you need to go into the tool for some reason, you maybe dropped something down in there. Um, unplug the tool. Completely disconnected from power um, if you're going to go into the tool. Um, but hopefully you won't need to. If you do need to go in here, there's a big thing over here. Just It's an access door. It's got a couple latches. Um, that's where all the dust collects inside the saw. Um, it just swings out. Sometimes it drops stuff down there. It's, it's not a good um, but, uh, but if you're going to go in there, unplug the side. Um, that's about it. Um, any, any other questions you guys have? You guys are, if you guys, so. if you guys yeah. just want to like make some, you guys are here, if you want to make some cuts while I'm standing here, mm -hmm. um, I'm more than happy to hang out for that. Yeah. Um,